Thank you guys for joining. Though for those of you I don't know, um, my name is Kristen Slice. I'm a senior program manager with Arizona State University, and I lead. I'm part of a community entrepreneurship team on the entrepreneurship and innovation team. And so our team is a pro. A, is a separate team that does everything entrepreneurship and innovation across the university as well as out in the community. We have a strategic partnership called Peoria Forward, uh, which works out in the West Valley to build entrepreneurial ecosystems in the West Valley. And so we work closely with the city of Peoria represented by Amber and Karen who are on the call today as part of the economic development team. And a large piece of our goal is just to bring resources out to the West Valley to help increase connectivity between entrepreneurs and to be responsive. So we've been working really hard with our partners, the city of Peoria, as well as the Small Business Development Center and the Chamber of Commerce, all to work uh, in the last couple of months on several specialty projects to just respond to the needs in the changing COVID-19 environment and how we can be as responsive as possible. And that was really the impetus for today's training. So for those of you that don't know, uh, that task force reached out right after, uh, I think the first week in April, and we started doing phone calls. We've been keeping in close contact with the over 3,000 businesses in Peoria on a regular basis and one of the things we heard is for some people the zoom thing like we all know how to hop onto a meeting but how do you really make it work for your business and how do you really leverage the technology and increasingly now that people are realizing that that this is not a that this is a new norm and that we're consider everybody needs to pivot it's not just waiting it out until things get back to usual we thought the timing was really right to bring together uh some local entrepreneurs, as well as the great advice from Taylor Willman, uh, who is going to be leading the discussion today. And so this is one of many trainings and resources you have available through Peoria Forward. It is not just for Peoria businesses, it is open to all West Valley businesses uh, and beyond. So if you have any questions, Taylor will circle back at the end. You will be getting a survey. Hopefully you got all of our contact information. At the end of the day, our job is to make amazing entrepreneurs like all of you on this call successful. So please feel free to reach out and let us know. And with that, I will turn over to Taylor. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kristen. Thank you, Peoria Forward. Thank you, ASU Business and Innovation. I'm really happy to be here. And we're going to get started with me launching a poll. Uh, so you, you should see on your screens a poll being popped up. Just go ahead and submit on there as I just talk a little bit more about what we're going to be doing today. So today, you're going to be learning how to use Zoom to grow your business. And as you see from the poll, depending on what you plan you're planning on doing, would determine on the equipment you might be needing and some of the tools you might be using. And so we will be touching base on, on both ideas, but I always like to kind of get a feel for the room of, you know, where people are at. And so basically it, it looks like it's pretty split. <laughs> people need some assistance with doing group meetings and people need assistance with doing one-to-one -one meetings. So that's great. So we're going to definitely take some time to really discuss the uh, equipment you're going to be needing for both, uh, as well as some of the tools you might be using for both scenarios. So thank you all for participating in that poll. All right. So go ahead now. We're going to just move right along and you know even though we're going to save time for the end to a answer any questions you might have if they're on top of your mind please utilize the chat box in order to have additional questions in there and so any type of question that you might have once you have it put it in that chat box and then we'll make sure to spend some time at the end to review the chat box and answer any of those questions that you may have and so, yes, I am Taylor Wellman. I'm co-owner of Financial Potion. We provide video marketing solutions in the form of production, editing, social media distribution, and training. And training has definitely been something we've been doing a lot more of because we want to help people, you know, utilize technology and work within their current budgets in order to stay in business. And so really, first thing you need to think about is what is my purpose? And we've already discussed that a little bit. Are you going to be doing group meetings or are you going to be doing one-to-ones? Are you going to be doing a little bit of a mixture of the two of those? And so first is, what equipment do you need? We need to be successful by having the right equipment so that way we look our best, sound our best, and perform our best. So some equipment you might be needing. 
let me go ahead. I'm actually going to switch the screen here in one moment. On our website, we like to make it super easy for people to be able to purchase the equipment that they need just utilizing, uh, you know, Amazon. As much as I do love to shop local, I do actually shop at Photo Forum quite a bit. Uh, it's really nice also sometimes to get things a little faster, which Amazon can do that and they have a, a larger variety of uh, equipment you can purchase. And so on this webpage, anything that I'm going to be recommending today is under the startup. If you're utilizing Zoom and, and you're trying to stay in business, there's no reason why you should be spending thousands of dollars on equipment. Everything that I'm going to be recommending to you, you're going to be able to get everything you need within $100 to $200, depending on what you already have. And so number one is you need a quality web camera. Many people will just utilize the camera that's already built into their computer, uh, but by having a designated web camera, many times these are higher quality cameras. And this one right here is actually the one I'm currently using. It's the FiFine webcam, and it's an HD 1080p web camera that does a really good job in keeping you in focus. I was previously using a Logitech, which was more expensive. Uh, however, it would get you out of focus, and there's nothing more annoying than having someone out of focus when they're talking. And so make sure that you have a high and camera to be able to capture yourself. In addition to being able to see you, we need to be able to hear you. And so having a designated microphone, whether it's a part of your headset or you have a separate microphone, when I do a lot of videos and a lot of training, I tend to record them. And so I don't really like having the headset look. And so since I'm mostly doing one-to-one -one or sit-down group meetings, that's where we want to think about the end in mind. What are going to be those majority of those productions? Since I'm sitting down, I can utilize just this inexpensive $25 microphone. That's actually the exact microphone I'm using right now. That's wired into my computer. However, let's say you are a yoga studio and you're wondering how in the world am I going to still have my classes when the governor said, I'm not allowed to have my building open. Well, that's when you can utilize Zoom in order to still hold your classes. But unlike myself, where I'm going to be sitting stationary, you would want to invest in a wireless microphone that once again can still plug into your laptop, still can plug into your desktop, still plug into your tablet or your phone. And so utilizing a Kimafun wireless mic, you will then have the flexibility to be able to walk around and move while you're doing your class and so when you think about the end in mind if you know you need to be able to walk around and move around then you're going to want to do the wireless mic in addition to being able to see and hear you we need it to be seen clearly and so then that's where you'd want to scroll down into the lights so the lights you have some options once again let's think about the end in mind are we going to be staying stationary primarily well then you can get away with mostly the ring light. The ring light is a really good light for introductory people who just need to have that one light just shining onto them to illuminate their face. The key with lighting is that we want to eliminate shadows. We want to try to look as smooth and as shadowless as possible. And then also, if you're planning on doing a virtual background, you're going to have a clear image when you add more light to your scene. Not only do you need to be fully lit but your background should be fully lit and we'll even talk about how utilizing a green screen will give you a better key notice I can move all around and my hands aren't disappearing and my head isn't disappearing and so it's important to add light to your scene and that's where adding this ring light can be really beneficial or you don't even have to go that crazy I'm gonna show you what I'm using it's just these little lights. It's just these little lights and Gumby that you can then position in the correct way to then put light on your face. And so it's a multi light lamp that allows me to then position them so then that way I'm fully lit. Boop. 
And as you can see, that webcam was super easy to swivel and swirl. And so sometimes it's nice to have a web camera versus just utilizing what's on your desktop. So in case you do have to swivel it and swirl and tilt it and show other angles. So we are talking a little bit about, okay, I love having a virtual background. If you're doing, you know, one-to-one -one trainings or you're doing these group trainings where you're going to be staying stationary, then adding your brand is a great way to have that brand awareness. And so you can do this two different ways. Number one, um, really, you don't have to use a green screen, but I highly suggest if you want to have a crisp background to use a green screen. And so this office chair green screen is super cool because you can easily slip it on the back of your chair and then all around you, even as you swirl and move, you're going to keep that background in there. You also have an option of doing kind of this, um, the setup, this green screen setup. The nice thing about this set is that you get the lights you need and the background you need all in one. I'm kind of using this setup minus the lights at the moment. Uh, when you look up at my setup here, I'll turn off my green screen for a quick second so you can really see how it is looking. Doo, 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 doo. And don't worry, I'll show you exactly how you add your backgrounds and everything too. And so when I say I don't have a virtual background, you'll see that this is actually a C-clamp that is holding my pop-up green screen. And so the reason why I personally have this set up is, well, we do video production and I already have this green screen. And so that's number one. And number two is that my particular chair, I'm using a ball chair. It doesn't really have as big of a back to be able to slip on the way that you would need to slip on that chair green screen background. And so, that is what you would want to use if you are planning on having a virtual background, but you are definitely not required to have a virtual background, especially my example of people who, uh, you know, might be doing their yoga studios or might be doing their, um, you know, uh, any type of gym classes. Cause that's what I know. A lot of my clients who have gyms, they are worried about what to do then you're not going to necessarily need your green screen because you want to be able to have a nice wide angle where which again using a um a webcam could actually help you get a wider angle than your typical cameras and uh you know you don't need to have that green screen background because you just need to see yourself in your studio we want people to remember the beauty of the studio that you provide okay so let me go ahead and get back to our powerpoint and so this kitty here, that's holding a DSLR camera. If you have a DSLR camera, you could definitely plug that into your computer and utilize that as your camera as well. But then you're going to want to make sure that you have a tripod to hold the camera, that you have, you know, an HDMI cord linked to the camera, to the computer. And if you're not that technically savvy, then you're going to have a lot more success keeping it simple by using a webcam that's just plugged in with the USB cord. So a quick recap of the equipment that you need. You need a camera of some sort, whether it's going to be the camera that's already on your desktop, your, your tablet or your phone, a web camera or a DSLR. You need some sort of audio. Yes, every single device has audio inputs already. They already are, are getting our audio, but it's not gonna be as crisp as if you were to use a microphone. And so think about the situations you're in, whether you can utilize something that's stationary or plugged into the computer, or if you need something that you can walk around with. Lighting is extremely crucial, whether you're having a virtual background or not, because we need to be able to see your full self and you need to minimize the shadows that you have. And then lastly, think about your scene. Do you need to have a green screen to have a really nice, crisp, branded background? Or is it something that you just need to make sure that your studio background looks nice, looks clean, looks like your brand and is still fully lit? So you, that's where the lighting, you need to think about your end in mind. Maybe you need more than just the one ring light.
Okay, so moving right along, um, I'm just going to launch another poll. So as you can see, I'm, I'm, I launched a poll previously and I'm about to launch another poll. And the polls are a really fun way just to kind of get engagement as well as get people's opinions. And so this is a small group that we have today, which is, you know, nice. We get to really have some deep conversations and definitely answer all your questions that you have at the end of this. Uh, but with polls, when you have a, a large room, it helps give you a pulse of who's in the room. And it's just a nice experience. It kind of breaks up the monotony of just hearing someone talk and talk and talk. You get to kind of participate a little bit. And so that's where utilizing Zooms can, or polls on Zoom can be a lot of fun. And we'll talk about how to create those polls. And so it seems like most of us have created a Zoom meeting before, but not everyone. And so that's totally awesome that we can go through everything here. Okay, so we're going to talk then about how in the world are we going to even set up a Zoom meeting. So I'm going to reshare my screen again on a different screen. Lots of jumping around. <laughs> and whoop, share. Okay. So as you see here, this is what it's going to look like when you first just log on to Zoom. And so I can go to my account and then I can say that I want to schedule a meeting. Go ahead and put the meeting topic, whether it be the title of your talk or yoga class one or meeting with so-and-so. Your description is completely optional. It's nothing that anyone sees. It's just something that's gonna be, you know, your general information on there um, and, you know, any explanation you would wanna give the attendees. And then just put in your time and the start time. Start times. Now, whenever I'm hosting an event, I always give myself a half hour ahead start time because if someone is someone who likes to be early, which I do prefer people to show up early than late, you want to make it so people can have access to get in. And so go ahead and always plan to start your Zoom meetings at least a half hour before the actual start time. Duration, you can put your duration in here, although if you go over, as long as you have a paid account, that is fine. And so free accounts are accounts that you can have meetings for up to 40 minutes. You are only limited to 40 minutes. Or there's other accounts that you can purchase. I have just the next account up where you can record for up to 24 hours. I don't know if I'd ever have an event that lasts more than 24 hours. That would be intense. <laughs> and so go ahead and you can just put your duration. Um, registration, you can choose whether to have that as a requirement or not. So that would be something where if you are having people pay to have access, sometimes you can add then that registration in there. But I normally just do the payment separately and a lot of people will use something like Eventbrite in order to get the payment. Apologies for cattails that wanna come up the beauty of working from home. <laughs> and so securities and, and waiting rooms. So this is something that Zoom has started to require, that they require everyone to have a passcode and you know enable a waiting room because they don't want people to get Zoom bombed. When COVID started, uh, I guess hackers got bored and wanted to come up with other ways to mess with people and they would Zoom bomb where then out of nowhere in the middle of your presentation, something inappropriate would pop up or you know something to derail the meeting and so you want to have a passcode and then basically what a waiting room is it's a spot that people will sit until you the host gives them access to come back on however whenever I am starting a meeting what I will do is if you can see my full screen now uh, under security, you can click on that and then disable the waiting room. If you are having a meeting that includes more than one person, then I would encourage once you are on, and especially if there is already a passcode already included, then unable that waiting room. So then that way you don't have to click on every single person to give them access to admit in. So let me repeat that one more time. If you enable a waiting room, which is a default when you're scheduling a meeting, 
If you have more than one person who's going to be joining your meeting, it's beneficial to turn this feature off. So see, I just turned it on. So that means anyone who would be newly coming into the meeting would have to get admitted in. However, if I knew the meeting was starting and I was gonna have a group of people come on, I just go ahead and I take off the enable waiting room. So then that way people can just trickle in as they show up and I don't have to press on every single person to allow them in. It makes it very simple when you have group meetings. Other security features while we're here to talk about. You can remove a participant. If someone's being a troublemaker, go ahead and get them out of that group. Although I have a feeling we're not gonna have troublemakers here, so I'm not gonna remove anyone here. But here I can allow other people to share screens. You know, that's something really great. If you know you're going to be working with a group of people, perhaps you're having a panel and other people are gonna have to share their screens, before the meeting starts, just to make it a lot more smooth, go ahead and enable other participants to share their screen. Enable other participants to chat. The chat box is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a place for people to be able to communicate, be able to share resources and ask questions. Um, rename themselves. You know, if they're new to Zoom, they may not even have their name on there, on their profile. So you wanna give them an opportunity to name themselves. Unmute themselves. Once again, end in mind, what kind of class is this going to be? Is this a class where you truly just wanna provide content but don't necessarily want the feedback from others? Then you'd wanna uncheck that. You'd want people to stay muted the entire time so then that way you don't hear their kids in the background or you don't hear their phone calls that they're taking because they forgot to mute themselves. And so think about, do you want to have participation in your meetings? Um, and then entertain and shared, on shared content. Do you want people to be able to make comments on your shared content? So think about what type of meetings you wanna have and what abilities do you want to give your participants? So back here to our initial meeting options. I'm gonna make you all small here so you can see this a little bigger. So back to your initial meeting options. Enable to join before the host. That's something that if you want people to be able to sit in this meeting before you're even there, that you can click on that. I personally never do that because when someone comes into a meeting, A, I'm there a half hour early. And so if they're there before a half hour, they just are there a little too early. And B, when someone does get in a meeting, I want them to see something that lets them know they're in the right place. And so as you came on, you probably saw that first screen from the PowerPoint. It showed Peoria, Peoria Forward and how to learn, you know, how to use Zoom for your business. You knew instantly when you got there that you were in the right place. And so once again, with our yoga studio example, if you're doing a yoga class, come up with just a one screen graphic, either using PowerPoint or Canva.com, that's then going to be kind of that home screen for when people are first logging on. So that way they see something that they recognize and they know they're in the, first, the right spot. Mute participants upon entry. Once again, let's think about the end in mind. Do you want your participants to talk with you, ask questions, and have a conversation? If so, then you don't want to click that. However, if you're doing a class where you just want people to be students, sit there and be quiet, then have it muted upon entry. So then that way you're having less likely interruptions of you know, people's lives all around them. Only authenticated users can join. That's a safety option in there too, that you'd only want people who are, are truly allowed to be in this to be in it. But I feel I'm, I personally feel safe enough by having the, the ID and the passcode. So I typically don't click on that. Break rooms pre-assigned. Break rooms can be a lot of fun. And so whenever I have larger organizations I'm working with, we'll have a general session, which is like this, but then we can also put people into what's called break rooms. And so over here, you can then go to break rooms under more, where then 
I would want to then say, okay, let's say we took our group right now, right? I see that we have, we have nine people. So maybe I want to put, you know, uh, four people in one group and five people in another. It's an odd number. So, oh, I see 10 counting myself. Oh, I didn't think about myself. So 10, that's even better. Five people in one group, five people in another. What those breakout rooms do is it allows you just to communicate amongst the small group. These are really great to do when you have these larger organizations or these larger events that you can then allow people to have that socialization. That's something that's really being missed during these COVID times is the ability to network and the ability to really talk with one another. And so if you're having an event where you are having 25, 50, above 50 people, you might want to consider having breakout rooms to give people that opportunity to have more of that one-to-one -one connection. I know every time we've done breakout rooms, it's a lot of fun and people really enjoy it. And so if you already know who's going to be in the room, then you could do a breakout room pre-assignment and try to assign people into a room. Or if you're not sure who's going to be in the room, that's where you can utilize your bottom bar or top bar controls to go to more and then breakout rooms, and then it can be randomly selected. So you have options. You can either randomly put people together or you can assign to match certain people together in certain rooms. You can also choose to record the meeting automatically. I personally never check this because I'm always on a half hour beforehand and I don't want to have a half hour of me just staring at, at my screen as I continue working. <laughs> I only want to have the actual content recorded. And so you can just do that during the recording on your bottom bar. You'll either see it as one of these icons or if you don't see it, you can always click on more and then you'd be able to click on record for recording the video to either your computer or to the Zoom cloud. So that's going to depend upon how much space you have on your computer or on the cloud to save that content. Alternate hosts. So you can have alternate hosts, but they're now going to be a part of your organization, meaning they can then access your Zoom account and, and use your Zoom account. And so I really never do alternate hosts since a lot of people I work with have their own Zoom accounts. You can easily at any point make someone a host. And so let's say I wanted to make Kristen a host, for example. I click on participants and then I would find her name. So you would just scroll, find her name, you can ask to unmute. So if you ever wanted someone to talk, you can click on that and I'll give them a prompt to unmute themselves. But in this example, I want to make them a host. And so I could click on more and then I could click on make host. That then gives Kristen all the capabilities that a host would have. <laughs> but let's say I heard someone talking and I want to mute them. Since I was the original host, at any point I can reclaim hosting abilities to then have the controls to mute people or do whatever it is that needs to be done. Sometimes you would need to make someone else a host is when you did not already allow people to share their screen. That's probably the number one reason why you would have to make someone else a host is if you didn't allow other people to share a screen, but you want one particular person to share a screen, that's when you can then go to more, make them a host, and then they would have the controls to be able to share their screen. And then even if you were to reclaim hosting, it doesn't take away their screen share they're still able to continue and share their screen. All right. So once again, when you're setting up a meeting, you also want to determine are you having a meeting or are you having a webinar? So a webinar is a different feature within Zoom. It's different than a meeting. With a webinar, it is, I want to say, $40 a month for the webinar feature. And that's where you can then set people up to be participants and to be attendees. And so the participants would basically kind of have hosting controls where they would be able to talk, be seen on camera, um, share their screen and everything, while the attendees would actually stay blank. You would not see them and they would not be able to communicate other than the chat. And so that's something you want to think about again when you're thinking about your end uses. 
Is it something where everyone you have on, you want them to be able to communicate and participate with you? Or do you want them to kind of just be students and stay quiet and only utilize the chat for communication? Once again, enabling the waiting room, it's good to do before you log on. So then that way people are kind of in that holding station and they're being told that they're going to be admitted in once the host is in. Uh, but once you are in, once you the host are in, go ahead and um, uncheck that waiting room so people can just trickle in nicely. And we already kind of went through some of those meeting options. But what I want us to do is also talk about um, other options on here, including this virtual background, since I know this is something that a lot of people have questions about. And so this bottom bar here, let's talk about this a little more in detail. This bottom bar, the first one we have is your microphone. So whenever someone goes, oh, I can't hear you, make sure you have your microphone selected. And you might need to click on this downward arrow in order to get to your other controls. As you can see here, we have different microphone uh, options here. We have different speaker options here. And then at any point, if you need to do a test, you can go to your microphone settings and then you can see that you actually are having levels. If you don't see that you're having levels, then that means there's something going on with your microphone. So same here in the bottom bar, we have our video. You then need to make sure that you select your correct camera so then people can see you. Under video settings, that's where you have other options, whether you want it to be the 16 by nine widescreen or an original ratio, always do the 16 by nine, that is an HD scale. And so have 16 by nine, enable your HD, especially if you have a camera that does HD quality mirror my video. So that means if you were to write something, you know, normally that you would write something and then hold it up, that it would show correctly on the person on the other side. And so that's where you would mirror your video. Touch up my appearance. My skin looks pretty smooth, I would say, but I do not wear any foundation. I do not wear any makeup. Occasionally I'll do the mascara to try to like pop my eyes that little bit more, but I really don't do any makeup at all but the touch up appearance makes it look a little prettier, I feel. As you see, when I untouch it, you can see a little more lines in my forehead and on my face. So we're gonna turn that back on and make me look still nice and smooth. And so that's a really nice tool if you want some quick, easy makeup. <laughs> uh, always display participants' names on their video. You don't have to do that, but I personally like it because especially when I'm having a class, I like to be able to call out on people sometimes. And, Names is, are not my best suit. I never forget a face, but I will forget a name. And so I personally love having little name tags where I can then just call out on people. Um, always show video preview dialogue when joining a video meeting. Um, that's something where you just, you see your video on there when you're joining the meeting. Hide non-video participants. I like to do that because I typically record the meetings and just having a bunch of blank black boxes doesn't look that attractive. And so that is just pre purely an option for you that I think you want to think about more uh, when you're recording. Spotlight my video when I speak. That can look nice from time to time if you don't want to show a group setting, if you're not recording it in a gallery mode like this currently is, gallery mode. This is where I can see everyone. As you can see, there's these different icons where you can then see a gallery. You can just see everyone in a nice line. That's where it shows a line, a box of a particular person, or hide and don't show anyone. And then we can display up to 49 participants per screen in gallery view. Since I do a lot of recordings, I like to have as many participants in a box at once because then it just looks more impressive. And then when you do have meetings that are beyond 49 people, you could just click over to the different screens to see everyone who is on. So on the advanced, so that's what I just clicked on at the bottom was advanced, enable denoise. 
if you don't have good lighting, you're going to have some what's considered noise or fuzziness in your screen and in your image, especially when you're wearing blacks. Black coloring really makes it noisy. And so if you enable denoise, it's going to once again kind of smooth out the image a bit more. And so all these other enabling um, hardware, it, it really does help with the, the video processing and the video recordings. Once again, I really do focus on recording these and so should you because you should really take advantage of your time. If you're doing a class or a presentation, always record it so at least you can share it with everyone who, uh, who signed up for the class, but then you can also take that footage and make small little snippets. Make 30 to 60 second highlight videos that you can use in order to promote your next class. Okay, back here on the screen. We've already talked a decent amount about security. Um, we didn't talk about locking the meeting. So I could choose to lock the meeting if I didn't want to have didn't want to have anyone else join. So if I was having a one-to-one -one and I knew for a fact that only the two of us should be in this meeting, I don't want someone who's testing a link later or testing the same link for a different meeting uh, to be able to log on. And so you can click on lock meeting, which will then shut anyone else down. You can say, okay, this is the meeting, we're done, it's locked, doors are closed. I, I, it makes me think about college. It's like once you saw that door closed, you're like, ah, oh, I'm too late, I'm screwed. I'm I gotta leave. <laughs> so it's the same idea. Polls, we discussed polls a little bit, um, where you can then pre-plan your polls. I'll actually show you again how you, how you would put the polls in. I didn't show you just that yet. Um, but once you have your polls set, you can then choose which poll you wanna post, and then you can relaunch the polls, share results, and do all your poll launching right there from that particular poll screen. Participants, when you click on participants, that then gives you the whole list of participants who are currently there, you are then able to mute all if you wanna mute all, which I do suggest you do whenever you are providing education. You don't wanna hear the phone calls or the dogs or the kids in the background. Uh, but this is also where you could go ahead and ask people to unmute and then give them the opportunity to become host, allow them to record, rename, maybe put them in a waiting room if you need to put them in a different room and so forth. So, participants button gives you access to then manage all the participants who are on that particular call. Share screen. When you click on share screen, you can choose what particular screen you want to share. Um, and then you can go ahead and just click on share and then that will share your screen. And then we have pause share. If we wanted to do any pausing of what we're sharing, maybe something popped up you shouldn't see, I can pause it. <laughs> Annotate if you wanted to make a note on anything that's being shared. Uh, remote control here, if I wanted to give mouse or controls to anyone else, I could then click on that. That's something I, I never really mess with. And then more gives you a lot of different options here too. Sometimes you'll see these options at the bottom of the bar, but if you don't see something you're looking for, um, then always click on more. For example, chat, you'll typically see at the bottom of your bar or at the top of the bar, depending on where your bar is. But if you don't see the chat, always click on more, and then that will give you access to the chat box. Once again, breakout rooms. That's an opportunity to break up this general session and put people into smaller groups so then that way they can have some one-to-one -one time. Your recording info, that's where you can choose to record from your to your cloud or to your hey, computer. Hey, Taylor? Yes? I think you've got a screen up that's blocking us from seeing where you're clicking. Oh, goodness. And so we Thank can't you. follow your, I uh, don't think we could follow your screen. Let me, okay, make sure we got that. So share, so do you see the more now? It's still just appearing as, uh, it almost looks like it's frozen. Very interesting. So I'm currently sharing the entire computer screen. Do you, and you see the toolbar, correct? Nope. You do not see the toolbar. Yeah, it's currently a screen of the back end of your Zoom. And gotcha. it's, it's you frozen. Well, then so I'm, I'm gonna show you using this. I, I was hoping to be able to go. show you live, um, but, it's the toolbar and so Zoom, I know sometimes, even though I'm sharing my whole screen, it's not showing the toolbar because it's your tools. There you go, but yep, <laughs> that works for you. That, I think we got a couple people in the chat that said that that, that has worked. Perfect, so 
as we see, there's participants. So you can click on your participants and then that's gonna give you your whole box of participants where you can then select on the particular person you want to either make a, a host or if you want to mute them or anything like that. Um, Q&A, that's another section. Typically you see those on your webinars where then if someone wanted to ask a particular question, you can put it in the Q&A versus just the chat. Polls, we've talked about polls and stopping and starting recording. And then on here, there should be three dots and says more. You might see more at the bottom of your screen. That is where you can then have access to other tools. And one tool, especially when you're having one-to-one -one meetings or even when you're just on Zoom by yourself, you can click on more and then you can actually do Facebook live videos. So Zoom and Facebook get along really well. And what you can do is you can click on more and then live to Facebook and then you can choose any page and any group page to then do a Facebook Live. So the benefit of that is let's say you're an organization where you have a private Facebook group of members and maybe you wanna utilize Facebook because that's already where your members are. You don't wanna train them to go somewhere else and to go to Zoom. What you can do is utilize Zoom in order to have a Facebook Live and then it's going to carry your whole scene. And so this nice, beautiful background that says financial potion, that's going to be shown on the Facebook Live. And so it's a really nice and easy way to go on Facebook Live with a nice branded image if you're utilizing a virtual background. And so, oh yes, so here's the more button as I was talking. You can always click on more when you're under your participants. And then if you want to, you may want to consider having a facilitator. And so if you're going to be doing, if you're new to this technology, and if you're going to be doing a lot of different things, sharing some screens, sharing some videos, you have people asking questions, it can be really beneficial to have a facilitator to help you keep people mute, to help answer any questions or technical issues that you might find in the chats. Now the video distribution roadmap. We only have 15 minutes in this call and I'm gonna spend probably five to 10 minutes just on this because it's extremely important. Whenever you do a Zoom video, you know, if you're just doing a one-to-one -one meeting, that might be it and you're just gonna share that one particular video with that one person. But if you're having a group session like this, you might wanna leverage your content more than just that one meeting. And as I was saying too, you might want to take your content and then edit a 30 second or 60 second snippet from it to be able to use for promotion ongoing. But what a lot of people do is they'll create great content, but they don't necessarily know how to share it correctly. And so that's where this video distribution roadmap can help you. Anytime you create a video, you're going to want to go down to YouTube lane. YouTube is not a search or a subject. <laughs> YouTube is not a social media platform. It is a search platform. It is a search engine. YouTube is actually the number two used search engine next to Google. And Google has owned YouTube since 2008. And so Google will populate YouTube videos as a part of their searches. And so you want to spend the time and actually do the nine steps to YouTube optimization in order to have the highest potential to get your your videos found. Let's say, for example, like this, how do you use Zoom to grow your business? We could take all this content, create a 30 to 60 second uh, highlight video to then promote for the next time we'd want to do this class. And so you would want to go and upload that to YouTube and make sure it has an optimized title. That means 70 characters of keywords that people are searching for. When someone's on YouTube, they're looking for solutions. So it might be, how to grow my business or how to use Zoom. And so utilize that information in that type of a video. Number two, you would need a full description. And what's considered a full description in YouTube is 2,000 characters. And although that might sound like a lot, you're allowed up to 5,000 characters for your description on YouTube. So 2,000 is less than half. And in those 2,000 characters, you need to share what the video is about with a call to action to your website or to the event page to sign up for the next event. And in order to have your link clickable on YouTube, you need to make sure it's the full URL. So the full HTTP dot dot slash slash 
everything. You need that full URL in order for it to be clickable on YouTube and on your, on your mobile phones. And so if it's an extremely long URL, that's where you'd want to utilize a bit.ly link in order to have it nice and short, but still clickable. Step three is having a full set of tags. Those are not hashtags. Those are actual tags that you want the video to be found for. And so those are words and phrases that have to do with the video. So think about what are some of those phrases that someone would put into a search engine that you would want your video to populate for. Number four is end screens. End screens are, video, are, are aspects that are at the end of a video, so the last 20 seconds of a video that are going to encourage people to watch more of your content and to subscribe to your channel. And once you've reached certain thresholds on YouTube, you would be able to have people actually link back to your website. So from your video, they can click on it and go right to your website. You need about a thousand subscribers to enable that feature. Step five is having cards. Cards are the same idea as end screens, except for you don't have to wait for the last 20 seconds of a video to encourage people to take action. And so those can be linking to other videos. Let's say you're doing a series and you're on video three of the series, you can tell people, hey, watch video two and keep people on track. Uh, and then once again, once you have a thousand subscribers, you can then have a button that links right to your website or to your event page. Then we also have correcting your transcriptions. Correcting your transcriptions is extremely important for YouTube because Google reads transcriptions for search results and you can also use those transcriptions when you're posting to other platforms. A custom thumbnail is extremely important. People choose to click on a video because the title says that they're gonna answer their question and the thumbnail says you're gonna answer their question and it looks interesting. And so a good thumbnail is gonna have a smiling face as well as some large text graphics to share what the video is going to be about. You wanna place your videos in a playlist. So just like a music playlist, one video will play after another and so forth. And then lastly, geographically tag your, your video in that location. Many of us do still have brick and mortars or they have an area of interest that you wanna focus on. So go ahead and geographically mark your video. Once you've done those optimization steps, you can embed your video on your website and your newsletters, use your link on your email signature, definitely an introduction video or whatever program you're promoting, you should put on your email signature. If you're talking to women 35 and up, then you want to go on Pinterest, LinkedIn and Twitter. LinkedIn, you have an option. You can either directly upload the LinkedIn or you can utilize playlist links from your YouTube account to upload the LinkedIn. So far, we haven't seen many differences in the analytics between videos that are directly uploaded and videos that we're linking from YouTube. However, oh, and then pin, pa Patreon, one I don't talk about often, but if you have anyone that's wanting to build a membership but doesn't want to pay to have a membership site, you can utilize Patreon in order to have a membership site, but you don't have to pay for the hosting. And so it's a really great way to jumpstart your memberships. On the other side of town, you'll see we have Facebook and Instagram. Facebook owns Instagram and they hate YouTube. So they live on the other side of town. You never, ever, ever, ever want to post a YouTube link onto Facebook. You can take the exact same video, post it as a YouTube link and, and directly upload it to Facebook and you'll be amazed at how many more views and shares and comments you're gonna get on the video you directly uploaded to Facebook comparative to the YouTube link. And so always directly upload to Facebook, still add the same custom thumbnail, and then also download that corrected closed caption SRT file from YouTube to then post onto Facebook. Facebook and LinkedIn are two platforms where 80% of the users on those platforms watch videos on silent at first. And so if you're uploading videos to those platforms, make sure you have large text graphics or at least closed captions on your videos. So as someone is scrolling, they can kind of read along, get a feel for the video, and then choose if they want to click on it to actually hear and watch the full video. For Instagram, really quick, you know, both Facebook Live, Instagram Live, once you say you're live, you're live. That's not necessarily um, other than utilizing Zoom for Facebook Live. Um, nothing you're gonna be utilizing with Zoom. And then Instagram, 
most of your Zooms are probably gonna be more than a, a minute long. They're probably gonna fall into that 10 minutes to one hour of content. And so you're gonna to wanna to utilize Instagram TV. And the beauty is it can be a horizontal display now. When Instagram TV was first created, you only could upload your vertical phone videos, but now you can upload your horizontal videos and the first one minute of that particular video will get posted onto regular Instagram. So then that way people can get a taste of it, choose to click on it, and then watch the full version on Instagram TV. So that was a really, really, really quick run through of a video distribution roadmap. But one thing I just hate is when people collect digital dust. They'll do a great job creating content and creating a video or creating a course. They'll do it that one time and then it just sits there and collects digital dust. Utilize the content you created by either posting the whole whole bit on a Patreon account where people can pay to access again, or once again, create those small snippets that you can then share for free on social media and through search engine sites like YouTube to then get people to sign up for your next course. Utilize this video distribution roadmap to get more. When you post a video versus just a photo or text about your event, there's 1200% in shares, it increased by 1200%. That is not incorrect, it's totally true, Google it. You will get a 1200% increase in shares when you post a video versus just the, the photo or the written content. And so if you wanna promote something, do it through video. Now we're gonna open it up for some questions. We have about six minutes left on this call. Um, I, I really wanted to go through that distribution roadmap for you. It's really important, but that roadmap in itself is actually an hour long course. And so you got a real quick overview of what that particular roadmap is and what it does. And I'm gonna be looking on the chat here for any questions, but I just wanna let you know, that is my contact information. If you have a YouTube account, we provide complimentary audits to let you know what you're doing well or some areas that you might wanna focus on to enhance your search engine optimization. And then we also provide complimentary half hour strategy sessions where we can talk about your goals and what you're currently doing marketing wise and how we can help you exceed those goals or you know, get to those goals even faster by utilizing video. And so I'm gonna go ahead and go to the chat and answer some questions. Um, would you consider doing I Zoom set, ooh, boop. I was going to say, I got it. I, I was keeping track because I was going back and forth. So I have a couple of them in there. So go ahead, Taylor. And then if you want and uh, unpause me and I'll go back through the ones that we that are in the earlier session. Excellent. 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 I'm just going to kind of work my way up from the bottom. So I see someone just popped in. Um, do you go over how to put your picture up when needed or how to do a virtual screen? Let's go ahead and do a quick review of that, uh, shall we? And that might answer some other questions that we have. So I'm showing you my whole screen now. And what you would do is when you want to show your virtual background, oh, let's see here, you're not seeing, do you see here where it says settings in the middle here on the screen? Or is everyone seeing in the middle? So what I have here is my video and I could go to virtual background on the left-hand side and then you would just go plus. So I could say add an image or video. So I can add a video in the background. Um, I was saying before we got started, whenever I have talks with my friends, I will put in there like some scenes from movies we love or anything like that that just makes us laugh. But honestly, I don't do the video ever because I find it a little distracting. And so I always just add an image that is then my brand. So I also have this one as an option too how to create these would be going to canva.com and look up the like YouTube thumbnail. So search YouTube thumbnail. That's going to be the correct aspect ratio and the correct uh, dimensions to then have a really nice looking background. And so it was as simple as that. You would just go to your settings, go to your virtual background, and then go ahead and then plus add your image or add your video. As I said, I have a green screen here. If I didn't check that I had a green screen, you can see that some weird stuff can happen. And so if you are going to be utilizing a virtual background and you want it to look clean, make sure you use a green screen. Check that you have the green screen. Make sure you have a light to be able to fully light yourself and the background 
and then you're gonna have a cleaner key. It's called a key whenever you get rid of a background that's green. Okay, let's see here. What other questions would we have? What do you consider doing a Zoom centered around video marketing social media? I think a lot of us would definitely, oh, yes, totally. I would totally consider having a Zoom centered around video marketing and social media. Um, I have done so many different courses. So I've done courses on the vital videos you should be producing, from how to produce those videos, from thought to distribution. I've done a full course on the video distribution roadmap. And so definitely uh, I can give you more content if that is what you need. That is not a problem at all. Uh, let's see, other questions, Kristen. I'm scrolling up, but just throw uh, at Recommendations me. on noise canceling apps, which I'm familiar with. Any recommendation on noise? Are you talking about the noise, like the, the fuzziness of your image, or are we talking about noise, like verbal noise? Uh, I, believe that, I believe that was Maria's question, uh, and she didn't specify. Uh, wondering if you have any suggestions on noise canceling apps for Zoom that are also secure. So I'm not sure uh, what that, if it was visual noise, I think it was audio noise. Okay, audio noise. So audio noise, you might hear some noise in the background of mine because I actually have a portable AC unit running. Um, my particular office just this side just doesn't get AC. And so I do apologize if you hear some noise. Um, I don't want to be dripping in sweat. Uh, so really how you're going to reduce your sound noise is utilizing another microphone. So this lapel that I'm wearing, it's a directional microphone. And so what that means is it's just capturing it from one direction. When you're only utilizing a microphone on your web camera or even your DSLR camera, it's omnidirectional. And so that means it's capturing sound coming from all over the place. And that means if you do have your AC running or you do have people in the background, it's going to have a higher chance of getting captured when it's omnidirectional versus using a directional mic. So I hope that answers it. And if it is that visual denoise, then go into your settings and make sure you click on the denoise aspect. And Does the recording save the chat? And if so, is there an option to remove that from a recording? So whenever you choose to record, it will save the chat, but it's going to be a separate file. And so it's going to be a separate file that is transcribed and time stamped. And so if you want to look back at a question someone had at a particular time, you can go ahead and just look at that chat file, but it's not going to be embedded into the video. Let's see. Uh, I think that? those were the majority of the questions that we had so far. Uh, the only other question I think was when they couldn't see more. If more isn't appearing, why isn't appearing? And I think it was just based off of the, the location the on your screen, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so that was just based on the share on the screen. So apologies for that, but it's always going to be on your bottom bar. So always look on your toolbar for the more feature. If you're trying to get more features for the breakout rooms or your chats or you want to share to Facebook, if you're looking for the more button to give your attendees the ability to become a host, then you need to click on participants, find that particular attendee, and then click on the more button. So, any other questions? So here's Kristen's Zoom tip if you haven't seen this yet. Uh, for those of you that don't know sign language, this is sign language for a round of applause. So thank you, Taylor. Round of applause for Taylor. You thank covered you. a lot of amazing territory. I know so many business owners are in the process of figuring out how do I not only use Zoom, but how do I make keep money moving and keep my business growing and marketing? Yeah. And I think you did a great job of covering not only the logistics of what Zoom can do and a couple of great nuggets, but also how do we use that now now use the opportunity to even further. So a lot of people are panicking to me around, you know, oh, I can't do it in person. The reality is now, yes, 
looks different. It's structured a little different, but it also means that you're doing your marketing while you're doing your business if it's done right. So there's just such a great opportunity to continue to pivot and share with that. So thank you, get those. So thank you, Taylor, very much from all of us. Uh, the last word I'll throw in there is all of you have received a survey for this event. It should be in your email box currently. If you have any further questions, if you have more content, always feel free. Reach out with suggestions or ideas. And Taylor, go ahead and take it away. Okay, I'm just going to say one other thing. I see one other question that popped up, and it was really a great question. Mm -hmm. um, it says, we share an account with several people. If I change the background, will it be used for everyone that logs in under the host? And so, yes, you do need to make sure that you change your background. A uh, fun story I had, so I love Tommy Boy, and I had a call with my friends, and so I had, you know, big guy, little coat seen on <laughs> in the background, and I forgot to turn it off. And so I started a meeting the next day, and what's in the background is fat guy in a little <laughs> coat. And so you do need to make sure that you either turn off your background if someone else is going to be using it, um, you know, or let people use the same background. <laughs> Wonderful last minute question. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Taylor. And thank, thank you all you. for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. We hope everybody stays safe and please yes. reach out to us if you have any other needs or questions. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Yes. Thank you all. Thanks.